childbirth. Mm. When the mother registers in the maternity ward, a medical bracelet mm -hmm. is placed on the wrist yeah. of that mother. Right. And it's a sign, she's not a mother yet, so a sign to the pregnant woman. Mm -hmm. As soon as that mother is delivered of that child, a corresponding bracelet mm -hmm. with the same name, the same number, the same relationship is attached to either the wrist or the ankle right. of that baby. Right. Are, are you with me here? Yeah. And what does this do? This empowers the rightful mother right. to claim her baby. Right. She is able through rights to have that baby brought to her room right. for mother visitation. She can go to the nursery for nursery visitation. Right. And when they look through the glass, she can point out that one. I don't care if it's handsome, if, if it's gorgeous, if that's not hers, they're not bringing it to her. Yeah. And if they be that one over here that needs some glorious inter divine intervention, praise wow. God, but nevertheless, it's hers. <laughs> and therefore, she receives that baby because their that bracelet the ID shows a direct correlation right. with each other. So, as a result, apparently, the women of Ashbury, Ashbury, Asbury, come on, they went for the name. See, see that's the reason you know your name is like, okay, go on, help with you. Help with you. That's, that's almost me, but it ain't me. Come on here. Asbury and John Wesley. Amen. Right. Glory to God. The women saw something. In Luke 8, verses 1 through 3, dealing with these three women. Who are they? Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna. They apparently saw some correlation between these women and what was transpiring in the historical account of Luke 8 and their theme of reclaiming the promise. At first, initially, I wasn't quite clear of how I would connect. And I'm a theme speaker. I have no problem with things and going forth and, you know, connecting what God has in my spirit along with what he has for the house. Because when the house and the spirit of God are in oneness, there is no conflict. Right. Say, Hallelujah. So therefore, I just took my time and, and all week I had been meditating. And the week before I had been in uh, uh, meditation asking God what would you have me to say concerning this scripture and God began to speak to me because my main concern was not based on whether these women had in the scriptures Mary Magdalene or Joanna or Susanna had a right to make a claim or even the right to reclaim what they already had my concern was in the theme, it says, praise God, reclaiming the what? The promise. So my concern was, what is the promise that they're trying to reclaim? I had no problem with the theme about reclaiming the what? The promise. But my concern was because the, the, the books of the Bible 
because she was married to Herod's steward or the manager of his household. Mm -hmm. But she still had to have been delivered from some type of unclean My spirit. Mm -hmm. Now there's Susanna. Mm -hmm. Now Susanna is only mentioned here in the entire Bible one time. Right. And this is the only place that we hear about who? Susanna. Susanna. We heard about Mary Magdalene. Many of us may have heard at this time or another, praise God, Joanna, but in particular, Susanna is very unlikely that we've heard of her. But I'm convinced that the writer, Luke, wanted us to be exposed to the spectrum of the various type of women that he allowed himself to be surrounded by. And not only did he allow himself to be surrounded by them, but he allowed them to give him water. To serve to minister to his needs. So my, my concern, therefore, is, Lord, what is it about this spectrum? And what is it about this topic, reclaiming the promise? The spectrum lets us know that Mary Magdalene, that Magdalene is a woman of the street, Joanna a woman of status, and Susanna represents 